All right, should we do this thing? Yeah. Even though I, f- I feel like this is this should all be on the podcast. Yeah, we should definitely put this in. Yeah. Be rolling this. So, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks so much podcast. for having me. Oh, it's my my pleasure to be here at Kinetic. In this is Fremont, right? Correct. I always get confused when I'm out yeah. of Linwood. By the Troll. Back. If you're familiar with Seattle, oh, Fremont, parked, right by the Troll. I parked right down by the Troll. Yeah. Yeah, we're about, we're on that block, just a little down the hill. Yeah, so yeah. tell me about Kinetic. Yeah. Tell me the story of Kinetic and what you guys are doing, because you're making a lot of noise in a good way yeah. in this area. Yeah. And it's actually kind of funny that we're doing this, because I feel like people might think that, oh, the fact that we hang out, mm-hmm. we should be you know competitors. Yeah. But we actually meet pretty frequently Yeah. yeah. to have lunch and talk. Yeah. And I think there needs to be more of that. So that's one of the things I appreciate about you is that we can go have lunch and like share ideas yeah. and, uh, you know, grow everything mm-hmm. rather than try to be yeah. fierce. Oh, we can't, you know, we can't talk to each other because we're in the same industry. Yeah. So yeah. It's, tell me, tell me the story. Well, to speak to that really quick, it's so much bigger than just, you know, growing your own business. We're trying to better the industry. Right. And the only way that can happen is to have like mind people, like minded experts and professionals in that industry come together and just brainstorm and have lunch and just hang out and see where that takes you um, instead of staying in your own silo and doing your own thing. So Kinetic, you know, we operate like a small business, but we've actually been around since, cry. we've actually been around since late 2010. So, but the genesis of Kinetic really just kind of started before that. It started about nine months before where I met my business partner, Dr. Mike Bourbonnet. And uh, he had a traditional chiropractic practice actually on the ground floor of where we're standing right now. And he saw that the industry was making a shift to where it was becoming more holistic in the sense of blending manual therapy with corrective exercise. However, during that time in late 2010, that model was non-existent. And so... Um, you know, it was kind of in jest at first where we talked about, hey, it would be really cool if someone did this and then it got more serious and like, hey, we should do this. And I had already been working at a practice for three years, kind of learning um, what works culture wise, operational wise and what didn't work. And it just, you know, it was just a product of great timing and a great idea. And so in November of that year, we launched Kinetic and, you know, it was about a third of the size that it is now. Um, we're standing in about a 2,300 square foot facility. It was probably about mm. 600 square feet, um, if not a little bit bigger than that originally. And it, we were birthed out of humble beginnings. We had no equipment. It was just myself and a dock and, and an awesome front desk. And um, we just grew it. And um, it was, like I said, a product of, of good timing. And we grew exponentially. We grew very, very quickly. Um, quicker than we thought we were going to grow, um, which might sound like a great problem, but don't forget that it also can create problems. And the problems were that we hired very, very quickly. And we didn't hire on the foundation of, of culture first. We were just looking for the best person um, that applied for a job, whether it be a doc or a rehab specialist. Got it. And so... Um, Within that, I mean, we were able to serve our community very, very well externally, but internally, that's when things kind of started to um, dismantle and break down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you've mentioned cult- culture mm-hmm. several times. Yeah. And I know that like, when we've had lunch, yeah. you're always culture, culture, culture. Yeah. Tell me about why culture is so important and like, what do you guys do yeah. to cultivate a good culture like what have you found that works yeah because, because hiring fast is something you found doesn't work mm-hmm. right because then it starts to you know you're not hiring based on that culture so yeah. can you speak a little bit about that yeah I mean culture is truly the lifeblood of kinetic and we all speak the same language here at kinetic if you you might get a few different answers if you interviewed you know the 30 plus people that we have in our team, like what culture means to them, but you'll see that there's a common denominator. Is that what you guys are up to now? It's 30 yeah, people. we have about 34 people on our team. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and the great thing is with our team is we truly all love each other. We have each other's back and we're all in for each other. We're all in for our patients as well. 
And we truly believe that without an exceptional team, you can't deliver exceptional results. So how do you, how do you create that culture amongst yeah. that many people? Yeah. Like what are, what are some ways you've done that? I mean, this board right here is an example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about this board. So this is our change your story board. So every patient that comes in, they have a goal. And that goal is, of course, to get out of pain. But our right patients, here. yeah. Pain free. Pain free with Krav Maga right behind it, you know. And our patients might have, say, a shoulder issue, and they want that shoulder issue to be addressed, of course. But there's a, there is a deeper meaning behind that, meaning that that shoulder issue is preventing them from doing something that they love. We got to find out what that is, and we got to make sure that we create that bridge to make sure capacity meets demand. If you want to do Krav Maga, we got to make sure that you walk into that dojo with the emotional confidence and the physical competence is to be able to do that. Painted, yeah, it's like painted yeah. on here. Painted yeah, it's like board. it's basically a chalkboard. Whose idea yeah. was this? This, I believe, was I mean um, Katie, spot. who you met, actually. Oh, it was Katie's idea. Yeah, yeah. It was Katie, who is our uh, patient care coordinator man uh, manager. Uh -huh. And she had that idea. And because of the autonomy and trust that we have in our team, we're like, go. And she came in the next day and did this amazing board. And we started filling it up the next day with amazing goals. So how long have you guys been doing this? So we've been doing the Change Your Story board for about a year now. But we've been living under kind of the headline of Change Your Story since our um, digital brand um, marketer, Nate Dietz, came on board. And I hear he's a great guy. He, he's an awesome guy. <laughs> yeah. And I, went, I don't think he'll mind uh, me sharing his story, but he read, um, originally came to Kinetic as a patient uh -huh. and really kind of fell in love with our approach to care, but also the experience that we provide and the fact that we have a bigger vision of what we want to do. We want to impact the industry, not just impact Fremont or impact Green Lake or impact just Seattle. There's such a different way of thinking about it. Yeah. You, as a business, you guys want to impact the industry. 100%. It has to be more about more than just, you know, let's say you own a gym, mm -hmm. more than just let's get more people as members, right. you know, or as a clinic, let's just get more new patients per week. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are thinking about how do we use our business to change the industry? Yeah. Why, why, why is that what you feel like you guys need to do? Cause it's the, it's the only way it's the only way that, you know, every industry evolves and it's evolving this way. And we want to be the beacon, you know, like we love meeting with other doctors in the area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just a couple days ago, I had another, I had a lunch with a doc in the area and you're cheating. You're cheating on me. I'm sorry, Ryan. I'm sorry. Did you guys go You'll to, always be. Did you guys go to? You always be my main <laughs> man. <laughs> did you guys go to a Greek restaurant? No, we didn't. Where did we go? Um, <laughs> we went to the Ram, which is where we had our last lunch. Wait a second. I know. I brought you, you back to the spot. You, went, <laughs> you took someone else to the, to our restaurant right after we went there. <laughs> yeah. Those fish tacos were amazing. I had to get back there. You had the fish tacos again. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. You got to get that. What did I? That uh, what was that salad I got? I don't I forget know. Though. It was good. It was like artichokes in it. Yeah. Artichokes are, they're really good. I think yeah. people underappreciate artichokes. Yeah. Okay. Getting off topic. Yeah. Tangents. Yeah. Artichokes. I mean, tangents. Yeah. So you went on, uh, so you meet with all these t docs. You guys want to be a beacon and all, it almost sounds like you want to create the model for other people to like follow. Mm -hmm. Look, here's what we're doing. Yeah. This is how it can be done. Right. And is that, I mean, is that one of the reasons why you meet with all these other docs or you just want to have better community amongst other people in the profession? I think it's all of the above. I mean, we have really kind of solidified ourselves as, as a great brand, a great company, a full of great team members that deliver a great product. Because we're so confident in our team and our skill set and the way that we deliver that to our patients, there's no threat, right? And so it's really our responsibility, duty, and pleasure to share that with everyone that we mm -hmm. can. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the whole industry that we see it is moving towards a rehab hybrid chiropractic model. And, you know, some of the docs that I, that I meet with don't do that, but love the fact that we provide such a unique experience. So we talk about that experience, but it all comes back to the culture that you're able to develop, right? If you don't truly love the people around you, if you don't have this bond and you're not all moving in the same direction, you're not on the same bus moving in the same direction, 
your patients, the ones that you are being paid to serve, will pick up on that. They will. And if you walk into an environment as an impatient and you're getting warm hellos and fond farewells from all corners of the room and you walk in, that energy is kind of like intoxicating. It's high energy. And because of our open concept, it's not just the energy from us. It's the energy from our other patients that are changing their story. And you develop kind of this bond with patients that might be in for a completely different thing but you're on that journey together, which really creates the buy-in that you're not. You know, if you're in pain, you know, conventional, not necessarily wisdom, but conventionally thinking, it's kind of closed off. You walk into an office and it's super quiet. Waiting room, hallway, treatment room, that's completely closed off. Yeah, it's not, it's not a friendly, no. like happy experience, no. you know? And so you feel kind of, kind of pulled in. You kind of get pulled in where, you don't feel as empowered as you could be because you should feel empowered. If you're at a point of frustration, you should have someone that's competent coming up to you and be like, we can help you change your story. Here's how we do it. And be able to clearly communicate that and just know that you have a team around you. Like if you came in as a patient, Ryan, you're not on our team, we're on yours. And we're gonna walk with you through this journey the entire time and you're gonna learn so much more about your body, but just know that you're gonna start to see that goal that you have hopefully really come to fruition and you just know that you're developing that capacity the movement capacity the physical capacity to like get to that point where you're able to do the, the stuff that you love being able to live a life free of limitations so what do you what are some of the things you do to create that that culture like what are yeah. some of the practical things i mean like how does someone create that you know <laughs> it seems like this elusive thing but there, yeah. ha there have to be some um like you know, objective, you know, right. ways of going about yeah. that. Can you share some of the secret sauce? Absolutely. So, you know, if you look online, like what, what can you do to create a great culture? You need to obviously have a great space, a team that you love, that you want to hang out with and, a, and a team that you have, um, that have like mutual trust with each other. Right. And of course benefits, all that plays a big role. But you also have to understand that culture begins at the top. And if the CEO, if there's no trust in the CEO, the owner, if there's no presence from the CEO and the owner, if you're owning a business and you're not there, and you're not a part of just the daily meetings, just, just talking, you know, at the end of the day, laughing. If you're not a part of that small community, you're not going to be able to affect that bigger community. So, yes, you can create a great space. I mean, desks in a room, that doesn't cut anymore. You have to have a fun environment. You need to have things like that. You need to have free stuff. Ping pong table definitely helps having great things like that. But it really does truly start at the top. So, you know, you, and you also need to get together on a regular basis. Yeah, tell me about, tell me about how you guys do that. So we have monthly team meetings, but one of the great, great thing is also is we hang out on the weekends as well. Because we, so that's part of like, you mentioned that the, the team members are people mm -hmm. that you enjoy hanging out with. Yeah. So maybe like previously, you know, when you guys grew really fast, mm -hmm. you were hiring like on paper, perhaps the most yeah. quote unquote qualified, mm -hmm. but that's not necessarily the person that you want to hang out with. Yeah. I and mean, is that part of it? Well, it's, it's having this bond in this relationship. Because some people are hard to have a relationship with, even if they're right. on paper really good. Right. And yeah. that can really have a, have yeah. a negative effect it's on, world on view. culture. It's worldview. It really is. Mm -hmm. It's being able to see the world differently. And, with, and when you can just tell, based off of having a 10-minute conversation with someone, mm -hmm. how they see the world, how their mindset is geared towards the positive, the beauty in the world, and not focus entirely on what's going on in a negative light in this world. And so by being able to identify that, um, it really helps instill this camaraderie, this culture, this, you know, you get to the clinic at 6.30 a.m. and you're getting ready for the day to be able to see people and you're like, you know what, I, wouldn't, I don't mind getting up and being at the clinic at 6.30 because I'm being able to spend and get ready for the day with some amazing people. Like people that you actually like. Yeah. I mean, one of like, 
<clears throat> I feel like one of the most desirable jobs that a lot of people have is like to be like, let's say a firefighter because mm-hmm. there's that level of camaraderie. Yeah. And I feel like human beings are just meant to have that kind yeah. of a thing. You yeah. know, like if you look back at, I know Ray, maybe Rafe will listen to this and he'll tell me I have it wrong <laughs> biologically, evolutionarily, <laughs> but um, you know, we were meant to be in, or not meant, but w- in the human history, we were in like tribes, we were in groups. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of that kind of turned into almost isolation. Right. And that's just not really what we're wired for. No. And so that you're really creating like a tribe in that mm-hmm. way of, of people who work together and enjoy each other's company and do things together. Tell me, um, what kind of stuff do you guys do in, when you do your monthly meetings? I mean, is it kind of yeah. just to cover the goals or like do you infuse some other things into that? Yeah. And then tell me how you, what like kind of hanging out you guys do yeah. to, to grow that culture and the bonds. Yeah. We start by sharing our wins. So we all get together and we start and it could be a professional or a personal win. And oftentimes we share both because it does one kind of does affect the other, right? Having a great day at work does affect oh, yeah, personal I mean, life. Personal and work yeah. life, I mean, they're really not that separate. They're really not. I mean... Because they both affect the other. Yeah. I mean, I've never kind of earned understood work-life balance because it's always been kind of one and the same. I've always really enjoyed working and living my life while I'm working, being able to do it at the same time and simultaneously. Um, that being said, I don't, I don't work 100 hours a week here in the office. I do have a family, but part of the, like when I'm at work, I'm, I'm the Sean that I am at home. I don't have to flip a switch, right? And I'm able to just relax and whether and at work and I'd be at home. So I don't bring stress with me to home that affects the life. Mm. And so um, that's why, you know, it's one of the many things why I, I speak for myself, but I know that the other team members would agree that it's pretty exciting coming to work every morning. Yeah. And then, you know, we start with, we start with wins and then, then we work on goals. Of course, you got to focus on the economics of things naturally and what are our goals and what are our metrics for the month. We'll do that. And then, you know, there's always, there's like a, a team dinner that we do, but also just the regular lunch, right? And being able to ask a buddy, hey, what are you doing for lunch? Let's grab lunch, like little things like that. And, you know, we also are setting up like team retreats, which are really fun. And we go to like Orange Theory, Soul Cycle, and other gyms together, just being a part of our community. What do you, what do you think of Orange Theory? I'm curious. I love Orange Theory. I love I love Orange Theory. I love Soul Cycle. Yeah. I love. Aren't the, aren't those businesses really shaking up the uh, the fitness industry? Right. And the one of the reasons why one of the reasons why CrossFit has skyrocketed and thrived is because of the tribe, because of the community. One of the reasons why Orange Theory has taken off. Is because of the tribe, because of the community, and right? The col- especially the, I would yeah. say that, like the culture and branding of Orange Theory, mm-hmm. like they do, a, they do a good job. Yeah, like a very unified experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never done Soul Cycle. I did um, Flywheel. Yeah, have you been to that one? I've been to both. Yeah, yeah. they're both incredible. Sure. They're I don't awesome. know how people. You know what I don't know is like, you know, in um, I don't know if they do this in Soul, but at Flywheel they have like this little five pound bar thingy, mm-hmm. and they make you do these like shoulder lifts and stuff. Yeah. Like, how the hell do people lift this fight? Like, I get so tired doing yeah. this. And then there's people. Torches your shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Like, this five pound thing. I'm always like, God, am I like doing some of the wrong stuff or what? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so, you guys do the retreats, you have lunches, you have the, the monthly um, meetings. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that we're. It's just. Is it? It's being able to instill a culture where you love to have your team members a part of your life and you're a part of their mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. And if like, right. and if that doesn't fit, you know, that person probably just maybe not be yeah. the right hire or, yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. Like some people don't fit into certain things and other people fit great. Yeah. I mean, you have to always take into account someone's professional n- training, knowledge, all that stuff. Of course. But you have to understand like, why are we doing this? But we're also humans. Yeah. Why are we doing this? Who are we serving? We're yeah. serving our patients. And in order to insert, serve our patients the best of our ability, we have to be able to be around a team that we truly trust. And it's more than a coworker. It's really more than a coworker. It's a teammate. So tell me about. I mean, you guys set up your your clinics in very specific ways. Mm-hmm. You have like the treatment rooms. 
and maybe we'll get some of this on on the camera too or it already was on there but you don't have treatment rooms Mm -mm. you have like treatment almost like cubicles yeah why do you why do you guys do it that way i'm curious because it all feeds into communication Uh right and so when a patient walks in when the music is bumping they walk into the experience do you guys bump the music in here oh yeah yeah. What kind of stuff do you play? We have, we have, Who decides the we have a playlist called KSR jams and it's kind of open source. So we have like over a thousand songs. So every team member, they have a song that as long as it's positive, um, and upbeat, they can add it to the playlist. That's it. That's the only criteria. And so they add it to the playlist. And so it's constantly evolving and changing. And when you walk in, you just walk into an experience where kinetic sports rehab kind of feels like club kinetic yet we're able to maintain that, <laughs> that standard a, of professionalism is that, a, is that a hashtag club kinetic club kinetic that's right and honestly i didn't say that that's that's from a patient it's like this feels like a club in here and i love it because when you say something like that when you feel <laughs> that experience you're saying it with a smile on your face that's a great start well who doesn't like going to a club not me well i guess it depends on the club <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you're you, thinking about like as soon as someone walks in you want them to immediately feel that experience immediately yeah so they're Cause I've been on know. the other side of it, right? I've yeah. been on the other side where you walk in, it's quiet. You have one person at the front, you know, welcome, go and have a seat. The doctor will be with you in a few minutes. So formal, very formal. And it's, it's sterile in a I, way. We're just in a day and age where like people don't want that format. Like that no. formality is not really no. what, I, what no. people, you know, connect with. Yeah. But you know, that conventional thought, it, it, it definitely is continuing because that's the precedent. Right, and that's kind of what it's the way it's been done. Right, exactly. And that's where you guys and saw it's worked for me. So you know, yeah, keep doing it. and that's where you guys saw in 2010. You're like, maybe there's a better way to do this. Yeah. And that's kind of a hard jump to make yeah. at first because nobody's really doing it this way right now. Mm-hmm. We're gonna take a chance and see what happens because we think this is gonna be a yeah, you know, the way to do it. So so you have the um, the cubicle. Uh, what do you call them? Treatment Station, base. Treatment base. Treatment base. Treatment base. Yeah. I like that. It sounds better. Yeah than cubicle <laughs> I just, the words weren't coming coming to me so you have the treatment bays that are probably like four or five feet tall yeah they're that allows they're like four feet tall and they're 10 feet by 12 feet and they uh, yeah and, the, and so they allow like if someone's on the treatment table it, it's private mm-hmm. but it, it's also like very open air in here yeah. um yeah i love that yeah. and the waiting room is like in it too yeah or the waiting area i don't know if yeah. i really call that a room yeah did you guys start with it that way? No. Um, when I kind of gave you the, the tour, it was, our original space was like 600 operating square feet, right? Uh-huh. And so we essentially didn't have room to put up a wall. <laughs> and so it was purely by accident that we are like, you know what? We're going to do an open concept. We're, we, that's, there's no other way. And I remember when we did our first walkthrough, there was a back, small back office area. And we're like, well, maybe that should just be the treatment room. And we quickly decided, like, it doesn't, doesn't work we're, because we're going to lose communication. I'm not, the doctor is not going to be able to hear what I'm saying to that patient. The energy is going to be sacrificed. And so we're like, okay, let's try it. Um, just limited kind of by our options. And after the first day, we're like, this is the way. This is, this is the way we're going to oh, do you it. You just immediately were like, we knew this it. is great. We knew it right away because I was able to have a conversation with someone across the room. I was able to have a conversation with a doctor. The doctor was able to have a conversation with me and, and then me to the front desk. And having that distance conversation, it just kind of fed in to that energy. Mm-hmm. And it just felt good. You felt alive when you came. And um, overall, the, the experience was better. And because we put strong, such a strong emphasis on communication and education, because of the platform that we're on in this, this open concept, outcomes improved too. And that's always a good thing. Well, you know, yeah. humans are psychological beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tell me about some of the marketing stuff that you guys do. Because yeah. you, you really integrate yourself with the community. Yeah. I've noticed. Yeah. I, so, see, it, I see it on the, interne- <laughs> on the, on the internet. <laughs> that's really the bedrock is... If you want to serve the community, be a part of the community. Be part of that tribe. Tribe. And so, um, you know, with we have a very active team, and we live to do active things. And so, by partnering with amazing, you know, gyms, studios, 
um, and other communities in Seattle, you know, I can pretty much guarantee you that half our team right now is probably out in the community doing something, whether it be working out, whether it be having lunch with um, a community uh, partner, or just doing something that is maybe outside the box that's gonna kind of help benefit our, our patients at a later date. So it's just awesome that we work in like such autonomy and such trust that, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing kind of, because I'm at an awe almost because I'm so proud of just what we've done and just because we live to serve. And so when we have a whole afternoon off on a Tuesday, we're out there in the community having fun, especially on this beautiful day. So what are some of the, what are some of the things that you've done mm -hmm. to, uh, or like, what are some approaches, you know, let's say someone's listening to this and they go, well, I want to, I want to do that. I don't know where to, I don't know where to start. Like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure you've made a lot of mistakes along the way and learned from those. And now you do it much more refined. Mm -hmm. What would be, what would be like a couple of, uh, you know, ideas or things that someone could do that, yeah, help some kind of yeah. le leapfrog those initial yeah. painful <laughs> moments, yeah. you know, to like do, to do the things that are more hard hitting and effective. Don't be afraid to take the first step. You might trip, but you're going to stumble forward and you're going to be moving forward. You know what I mean? You just got to get out there and you got to do it. Um, you, you know, I think that you just don't communicate through email. Yeah, no, nobody cares about it. Yeah. Like they just aren't responsive. Just show up and be a part and build that trust, right? It's the same model that works in Connect that works everywhere in the world. It's like, it's just general human nature. It really is general human nature. When I started doing talks at gyms, um, people would ask me like, well, how did you, you know, how did you start? Mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, you know, I emailed every gym within 30 miles of where I was and like two people responded, yeah. which means ni like 98% of people didn't respond mm -hmm. because you know, those emails that you get in your inbox that you delete, your email cold to someone yeah. is, is probably one of those <laughs> yeah. emails, right? But who's going to actually take that step to go meet in person and, and introduce themselves? It's, it, for, for a lot of people, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. You but that is the most like, effective thing. It takes the, the same amount of energy probably just composing that email as it would to just drive and show up. <laughs> you know? It really does. As long as you're not copying and pasting, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, which people can pick up on that right away. Oh, yeah. So funny story about that. <clears throat> when I was uh, finishing up, business school mm -hmm. <laughs> I was applying for like all these uh jobs at like accounting firms and stuff like that and uh you know it was like just such a repetitive process mm -hmm. so I would copy and paste the email and then um attach my resume and <laughs> one of the firms I uh sent it to I think it was to KPMG okay yeah. the only one I didn't get an inter initial interview with yeah. and I and it's because I didn't change the the name in the email when I copied and pasted it and I said, dear Price Waterhouse, you should, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm a detail-oriented person, da, 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 da. But it was to a different company. Yeah. How stupid is yeah. that? They're probably like, they read that. They're like, this guy's an idiot. Let's mm -hmm. just delete this. <laughs> <laughs> so don't copy and paste yeah. emails. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You like that? <laughs> I do like that. And honestly, it's a good full thing. Full disclosure, I've, I've done that before in the early days. I totally have done the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, because I'm kind of standing here so confident in the approach now, but I've, I've tripped and I've fallen before, right? I've yep. done it that way before uh -huh. and that's okay. But if there's a, if there's a hack that's like, you know what, you got to get in front of someone, you know, in this world that everyone's kind of living in isolation. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get in front of someone? Why don't you go to that gym? Because it's harder if you're not used to it. That's why. Right. right. But, the, but that's what you have to do. You got to be very comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's, it's, you have to. Is that a James? Is that an, a James Fitzgerald OPT quote? I don't know. Like how Maybe. I said the Anchorman quote. And I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so if it was, kudos, great quote. Yeah, it yeah. is a great quote. Yeah. So it's funny that both of our experiences are the same in that in that mm -hmm. regard. That going somewhere in person and building that relationship. Because think about this: like, if you just get an email from somebody, they're they're invisible. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not actually a real person. It's just a thing that comes to your inbox. Yeah. But when you go do when you go work with people in person and talk to them and build a relationship, that's really what yeah. we are hard hardwired for. Mm -hmm. you know, email is like this new thing. We're not like hard hardwired the same way right. as we are to someone being in front of us mm -hmm. and talking with us. Yeah. So you guys do a lot of events and stuff like that in the yeah. community of gyms too, right? Like you built that ability yeah. by going there. Yeah. And not just going there and dropping off pens with your logo on it. Right. You know, that, that's yeah. like what a lot of people do. Yeah. 
like, hey, here's right. some pens. First of all, an, a gym doesn't want your pens. Right. Okay, they have their own pens. Mm -hmm. But what they don't have is the relationship and your knowledge. Yeah. And that's, am I going on the right direction here you're on totally your guys' experience around. too? You're going down that, that perfect path because you have perfect to. Perfect path. You have to serve, and you have to serve by giving value, and just by giving value, by being a part, being present during a workout, being a present during a barbecue on a Friday or a Saturday, and not asking for business immediately, by just trying to be a part of someone else's story, by someone else's vision, and be able to bring value in other ways, you're gonna be able to, you're gonna win, you're gonna win. But if you're just sending out you know, 50 emails a day and you're shocked that you don't get a response back, maybe you should try a different tactic. Maybe you should go a little bit more personal. Always go a little bit more yeah, personal. It might not be like the, you know, the wording of the email wasn't good enough yeah. or something. It might just be that email is not the medium for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, email is what, 15, 20 years old? But we've get, been getting it in front of people for hundreds right. of thousands of years. Exactly. What do you think has more value? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what are some of the things you do community wise? Like you work with a lot of gyms and you mm -hmm. do, you know, classes and stuff, yep. right? Yeah. So we host workshops, free workshops. Um, on the weekends, I host like one to two workshops every weekend. I know you have something about workshops on the weekends. I know a couple of things. <laughs> and it's just, it's me. We host clinics in I've here. Done free Tomorrow we have a, we have a, like a functional training workshop. Uh -huh. Um, at this location, so you do them. So you do we some. Do. You do some here. Yeah. How do we'll you get do the, some, How do you get the word out? Uh, we get the word out through telling our patients that are here that might have a friend because this one's gonna be around hikers, right? And so oh, so you do like topic yeah. specific mm -hmm. activity, trail running, hiking. Um, I'm sure at some point we'll do paddle boarding as well, and just very topic specific. I love and then boarding. yeah, people people come and they'll tell their friends, but we also use Facebook advertising as well. Do you find that's effective? Yeah, might be very effective. I've never seen your ads, so you must be targeting, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably geographically different right, area, right? Right, No, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think, you know, having Facebook ads that can certainly be a, a very effective thing. Yeah. Uh, so you do those weekly, or what, how often do you do those so topics? So we do the ones, ones here. here in clinic, in our house, every two weeks. But we put on community workshops on a weekly basis. Wow, yeah. so, you, so, you, I mean, you're constantly, like, planting seeds, mm -hmm. so to speak, to do these weekly events at other places. Mm -hmm. Like, that's yeah. not an easy thing to do. No, how, it's how, not. Like, so how do, you stay on, how do you stay on top of that? I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. You're going to be giving your time. And the, you should be giving 100% of yourself during those events, mm -hmm. right? And with those events that, that I put on, you're gonna be able to identify people that can benefit from your care. Great, serve them, you know? Provide the service, bring them in. But again, it kind of goes back to changing the whole industry, increasing, mm -hmm. um, bringing value through, through education and knowledge. And so being able to do like a simple foam roll workshop, you understand how valuable that is for someone that's looked at a foam roller and like, I don't know what to do with this. Well, you know, what's funny about that is I think a lot of people who work in healthcare fitness, mm -hmm. they're like, that's just so basic. No one needs to know that, yeah. but that's but not the truth. But it's been the most, one of the most popular workshops we put on is a foam roller workshop. Absolutely. Be and I think that's why people would go, you know, people struggle with this all the time. They go, I feel like I don't have stuff to teach. Mm -hmm. And but when you're so ingrained in the health and fitness world, yeah. you take someone who isn't, yeah. and what seems like common sense to you is really new and valuable to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be okay with, with yeah. that. You know, people think like, well, if I do that, I, you know, I, I, like I know so much more than that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like uh, it's too basic for yeah. me to teach, but it's not. That actually might be the most beneficial thing to yeah. teach. Or you're just, you're just scared of getting in front of people, and that's okay. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I know you're comfortable in front of people. Well, I'm yeah, I'm comfortable, comfortable now, people. but yeah. I wasn't when I started. I was right. a nervous wreck. Yeah. I, I used to get so nervous when I would talk in front of groups. <laughs> yeah. Like shake, like, oh, and it would take me like 30 minutes to finally get in my groove. Yeah. That doesn't happen now. Yeah. I can, but that, you know, takes yeah. like 100 times. You're right. <laughs> it's going to take time. I mean, you get, you got to adapt to that. You got to put yourself in a challenging environment and adapt to it, but also be very confident in what you've devoted hundreds of hours to and the knowledge that you've acquired in that time. Yeah. And 
go ahead and share that with the community and share it in a very impassioned way. Share it. If you love what you do, that's going to come through. If you know that topic inside and out, it's going to come through and you're going to bring value to people. Even if your hand is shaken, even if you're twitching a little bit and you're, you fumble over your words, that's okay. People understand, if, but you brought yeah. them value and they're going to really appreciate that. If you're, if you're not doing things where you do feel uncomfortable, you need to start doing different things Yeah, because in order to grow, you should constantly be seeking out things that make you somewhat uncomfortable yeah. because that means they're new, which means that you're now expanding yourself. Yeah. Um, so I think that you shouldn't shy away from like, Oh, I feel nervous. If you have that nervous sensation, that means that probably means you should do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you guys do um, talks and workshops at other places besides gyms? Yeah. So we'll do corporate workshops as well. We'll do kind of oh, really, yeah. I, I didn't so know we'll that businesses we will do kind of like postural hacks, if you will. And we'll just go over common things in our industry, you know, how drills to relax the upper traps, to reset the shoulders. Um, and that stuff is so valuable. I mean, we spend our life in this position. If we can give someone a very simple drill to reset that system, to have that kind of recoil spring response to reset their shoulders when they get, when they, uh, get up from the desk and they walk around yeah. to reset that position. Um, and they have that mind muscle connection with muscles that been essentially shut off for a long time. It's like they don't even yeah. know what it, that feels right. like. They're like, why did, I didn't even know right. you. Whereas, you know, you're trained, you're like, oh, I could probably, I think I can feel myself contract that muscle. Right. You know, people sitting all day, they don't even, they're not even aware that there's muscles back there. No, and what the role of those muscles are. And so, yeah, we do corporate workshops. We do workshops at, uh, like I said, other gyms. We're also involved, I mean, we're a for-purpose business. And so we're very much involved with the Seattle Urban Academy, with um, you power we're involved with pencils of promise as well And so a portion of the proceeds that we get from the workshops we host in-house every two weeks goes towards pencils of promise Which help so the ones you're doing in-house in you, you guys charge for those yes But those you are give 20 bucks, but you give the proceeds or part of the proceeds to yep. some sort of charity Yep, and the ones that we That's do cool. outside in the community completely free at the corp, the corporate ones too. Mm -hmm. How do you develop those? I know people are going to be like, well, "How do I even develop the corporate?" I mean, they might feel yeah. like they might feel more comfortable going yeah. to a gym, you know, and like talking yeah. to the owner. Yeah. How do you how do you get ins with these businesses, these well, other like kind of non fitness businesses? That seems like yeah. probably less natural of a thing to do. Yeah. So everyone maybe has more important. everyone has a network. You know, everyone has that tribe, that community, and just being able to lean in, and you'll know like where your buddy works. And he knows your buddy. He will know that you know your stuff. At least you should. He should know that you're super passionate about what you do. So he's going to vouch for you. Or at least he can help connect you, right? If you have that personal connection to someone that makes the decisions, so much more powerful than calling, emailing, messaging, et cetera. So always assess, like, what is my network? It might just be 10 people. It might just be five people. But those are five people that can help connect you to that next person. Mm. So you just got to look in before you go out. Ooh, I'm going to make that into a quote. Look yeah. in before got you look out. video too. <laughs> With the hand motions and everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that might be um, a really underutilized thing for people to tap into the network that already exists mm -hmm. until they really you know, use that to the maximum yeah. when they're, you know, they're worried about sending emails. But it's like you already have all these people that you haven't even – talked with about doing something right. like this. I mean, think about all that untapped potential yeah. there. Well, I mean, the, I think the, in 2017, the first action when you want to network is like, well, let's look on LinkedIn. You're, th you're thinking two steps ahead. You need to think, you need to think about my network, right? The people I actually right. know. Yes. That know you, that know what makes you different. <laughs> and have them connect you. Don't just spam people on LinkedIn. God, I hate when people do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes it works. I but actually you'll met, never lose. You'll never lose. I've met a couple. I've met a couple people on LinkedIn yeah. that it turned out to actually be extremely um, helpful, but it's rare. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's a huge network that you already know. Right. Now you guys just won a re uh, an award recently. Yes, we did. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about what you won. Yeah. So. We were honored as the number one small company to work for in Washington State by Seattle Business Magazine. Um, did I say number one? Or was it number three? 
You said number one. I said number one. We were number three. We're number <laughs> one. We're going for number one next year. Um, I, like, I believe I that like, we're number one. I like that you've probably like envisioned that <laughs> yep. so much to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just an incredible honor to just be in the top 100 is an incredible honor. We were number seven last year uh-huh. and we got number three this year. Whittling away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so we're, we definitely believe that we are the number one small company and we're from Washington state. And so we're going to continue to execute our values and and live up to that and hopefully who knows we might we might continue to improve and continue and see the stage uh like we did this year wow did you have to give a speech yeah not have to sorry. i didn't give a speech did you but did you guys get to give a speech we did yeah who gave the speech so um the co-founder and owner dr mike bourbonnet gave a speech it was a very compelling speech it was amazing very emotional and w- even within that you know allotted like two minute speech he was able to really share our story and what makes us a great culture. Mm, mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Tell me more about who gave the, uh, the speech. So, uh, Dr. Mike Bourbon, co-founder and owner of this amazing company, he gave the speech. And one thing that he said is like, you know, we're a seven year old company and we, really went through some challenges halfway through, so about three and a half years ago. And before that, we were a good company, a company that most people would want to work for, but we weren't a great company. And he didn't say these words, but it was essentially the same thing as like, when we got punched in the stomach, that's when we really took a step back and really found out what matters. And transitioning into a great company by really focusing on culture first, it came with a lot of sacrifice. And I think that that has instilled a lot of the trust in our team because they know that we, there has been so much sacrifice to make this what it is today and to continue to make it what it will be in the future. Mm. And it's, you know, the art of storytelling, right? And so we want to make sure that everyone that, that joins the Kinetic team knows and understands that story of Kinetic that when we launched in 2010, we did not just shoot up like a rocket and we've been cruising ever since and just loving life. That's what it looks like from the outside though, right? right? The people yeah. look at that and they go like, oh, it must be nice that it's just so easy for you guys yeah. to do that. And you're like, dude, yeah. you should see the backstage, yeah. you know? Yeah. Front on stage always looks good. Yeah. So, you know, it's important to share this story. In early 2014, that's when like the first drop fell in that storm. So we uh-huh. lost, we lost about 50% of our team members. How many, what was the size of the team at that point? We had about, I'd say 10. Okay. Yeah. How many locations? We had just one location. You had this we one. just had just this location. Okay. And we had already signed the lease, lease for Green Lake location. Got it. And so we just lost 50% in about a five month time span. <sighs> yeah. And so it was very stressful. And at that time also, my son had just been born. He was <laughs> when it rains, two, it pours, right? I mean, does. these things can never just yeah. happen in isolation. He was, he was two weeks old when the first person left. And, you know, it, it got to a time where it's like, well, there's only, what's the alternative? Really? That's, I mean, I just asked myself, what's a, that one question? What is the alternative? Either I go all in and prove out this amazing vision that we had in 2010, or we just put our hands in the air and we walk away. And that was never an option. And you don't even know this, but when I made that decision, when we made that decision, I feel like I needed to kind of symbolize in a way the kinetic and that we are going to overcome this adversity and we're going to become the, the team that I knew we could be. Anyways, I went that night, I went and got a tattoo of our logo on my calf right here. What? Yeah. Let me see it. You want to see this thing? Yeah. Right there. Wow. Yeah. Let me feel it. Is that real? That's you just real. put this on before we got That's here? real. <laughs> <laughs> I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. So, so you were like, this is my sign of commitment. Yeah, it like, was. I'm going to do this, and this is happening. Yeah. It's almost like you're taking this action. Yeah. Because you know that, like, if I have this, man, I got to go all in now. Right. Exactly. I couldn't think of another, another gesture to really convey how in it I was to move forward than a tattoo. Um, and <laughs> that's freaking awesome. And so I went and got it, and it's just it's just been a symbol. I mean, I look at it, and it brings me back to that spot. It brings me to that spot. When I when I'm back to that spot in early 2014, 
I'm instilled with this deep appreciation and gratitude for where we are now. So after you get a calf pump, you're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. God, get yeah. Out. After about a hundred calf raises, <laughs> uh, I'll take a gander at it. You don't even want to know where the movement fix tattoo is. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> TMF right there. <laughs> so, so in 14, so 50%. Yeah. Gone Go on. in five months. Yep. Just signed the lease. What happened next? So we really, I mean, then they got the tattoo. Yeah. Then what happened next? So I got the tattoo and then we really looked at like, what are we missing? Where do we go wrong in this hyper growth that we had? And we didn't, we didn't factor in culture. We just didn't. And so you we went from knew, how many to 10? So we went from 10 to five, but you went from the fast growth, right? Yeah. We went from the fast growth where we had 10 within just a, a, like but six you, months. To you a went year. from like what? Two to 10 or what? Yeah, we went from three to ten, and I'd say about a year. Got maybe it. A so bit, maybe a little bit more. So within a year, you had seven new people come on board, yeah. which is when you're at the point where it's just three people. That's a lot. Yeah, I mean that's that's essentially exponential growth, right? right in that time frame. So, um, oh yeah, if you graph that out, whoosh, do it right yeah. here. Whoosh. <laughs> yeah, I mean thirty. I mean yeah, we're a small company, but every every company starts at one or so, two, right? Yeah. So you yeah. went from ten to five, got the tattoo said, where, where did we go wrong? So at that time I had a conversation with my wife right after like that weekend and was like, we're going to make this work. But for the next month I have to be a, be at kinetic from 6am to 9pm for the next month. Um, because unfortunately we had to let someone go too during that time. And there was just no alternative. I just had to do it. And you know, having an amazing wife that totally understands why you're doing this, makes all the difference in the world. Let's make sure she listens to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, of course, I mean, it was the easiest conversation ever. And, and it wasn't easy. You have a newborn at home, right? Yeah. Oh, and yeah, we said this baby. Um, yeah. I'm going to be gone from 6 right. a.m. to 9 p.m. And, so. that didn't, and that does not mean that when you get home, you go straight to sleep. You are still a father, and you are still a husband, and you need to continue to yeah. do that. And, um, and a month into it, then, our, then what we did was we kind of – just picked up the pieces at, during that month. There was just so many meetings of what we did wrong and what we're gonna do right moving forward. And the principles that we have, which is essentially to our values, be all in, over communicate, put patients first and obsess over the small stuff. And we got away from those principles during that time. God, the small stuff matters so yeah. much, doesn't it? Like the small stuff accumulates into the big stuff. Mm -hmm. It does. I mean, it's, it's the micro that feeds into the macro. And if you don't obsess over the f small stuff, you're putting the cart before the horse. You really are. And so what we did during that time is we reset and we had a small team. Uh, we launched Green Lake and had a smaller team going to Green Lake than we wanted, but we made it work. We were running lean at that time. The Green Lake, play, the Green Lake office is awesome. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. And, you know, and it was amazing because now we had a much smaller team we were all in that bus and it was great as you essentially created a magnet and you attracted people that thought the way that you had that same world view that saw the vision of kinetic and because we were able or being able to kind of hone into these principles and live these values the hiring process actually wasn't that arduous or cumbersome it was easier because you were attracting people that fed into that vision now not everyone that came to kinetic was eventually hired, but it was amazing what that attracted. Um, and it's like, yes, and the next person that, that would come and be like, yes, you were exactly who we were looking for for the first three and a half years. But because we really got tight, we really had a solidified, clear vision, it became, it became much easier. So then you went from five in 2014 to 34? So, yeah, so, yeah, so we went, yeah, I mean, during that year, uh, 2014, we grew by about uh, five, five members or so, and then uh, about five to ten, five to ten team members after that. And so it's been, it's been awesome, Ryan, I'm telling you. But we never once kind of rest. We're continuing to look at what we can do to improve our culture to eventually get to number one best small company to work for in Washington State. So after you do that, what, what hap what, what's next? Like, what, what do you see on the horizon right now? I mean, you know what yeah. you want in the short yeah. term, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. What do things look like a little bit farther out? Yeah. We have, obviously, big ambitions, just like you. 
we want to do these amazing things and we want to serve like different platforms and things like that and way to really communicate and get in front of customers. But if we're not able to deliver the true kinetic experience, then what really differentiates us in the long run? So we, we're continuing this year to look at what or how, we know what, we know what makes us different, but how are we gonna take that experience and be able to deliver that to someone, whether it be online, whether it be corporate or other platforms? You know what I love is that not once have you been like, well, you know, we wanna do X amount of dollars per month. Like everything's been about delivering yeah. the experience, building the culture, mm -hmm. providing people with value. What do you think, I mean, do people get too hung up? You think like, oh, we got to hit, you know, this amount of revenue per month. Like that's our goal. Like your goals aren't, I mean, I'm sure you guys obviously have like financial benchmarks, yeah. but that's not what the driving motivation is. No, it's not. And that's not to say that those things are not important. Right. Of I mean, course yeah. they are. Like you can't do, you can't do this yeah. if you're not making money. Like, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's simple economics. You got, you are a business, you're for profit, right? Yeah. So you, of course, have to bring in revenue, but the only way you're gonna to continue to bring in revenue is to make sure you take care of the, the small things first. Mm -hmm. The small things are the, really the big things, right? Yeah, and the small things are like, that's where someone would go, like, oh, it probably doesn't really matter if I do that thing. It's like, seems like insignificant. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, that's like, that's where the, the, yeah. the that's the thread right. that you start pulling and it all starts unraveling. Yeah. It seems like when you're thinking about those things, you're not, you're not thinking outwardly. You're not thinking about the marketing stuff that you need to do and all this other stuff you need to grow the business. You're just thinking like, well, I'm just focusing on the small team around me and I think we're good. Okay, let's go. Invest in that team around you and they'll go with you, right? You're not gonna go by yourself. They're gonna come with you to make this happen for you. So you, you just need, before you look forward, you gotta look to both shoulders and just look at the team around you. Are they taken care of? If they're not, you better make those sacrifices to make sure that they are taken care of. Mm. Are there any small things that come to mind? Like small things that you were like, ah, oh, we got to make sure we really hit that nail on the head. Yeah. One of the things is understand what your team members love outside of work and develop ways for them to continue to do those things. Mm. So we have yeah, really that, that seems hours. like, that seems like, right. Eh, you know, just do your job when you come here. Right. It's like, eh. so, our clinic hours, so our patient hours are about 25 to 28 hours a week. And you might look at that and be like, why don't you go 40? Wait, what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. But we need to be able to free up our team on the weekends to recharge and come back on Monday ready to serve, right? So we could say, oh, all right, we're going to be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday because that's kind of the standard. We'll stick with that. We'll have the yeah, weekends cause off, that's, cause hopefully. Because that's how everybody else does it, right? Right. Exactly. And it, it would have been an easy decision to make. And I think that the team would have understood early on be like, yeah, status quo, get it. But no, I, you have to figure out like how many hours in a day are we all in for our patients that we really are serving the best that we can. It's not nine hours We're we can be all in for about five hours a day. And we're just all about changing that person's story. And we're delivering all of our energy into them. And we also need to have that time to recharge. We need to take care of the notes, all this other stuff. And we're able to do that. We're able to recharge, but also during that time of recharge, we want to continue to let the community to know about our brand. So the way that we charge is not to go home and watch Netflix. We actually go out <laughs> and we work out with our team. I mean, the reason why I'm pointing over here is because yeah, just at? literally down this strip, we have three community partners just down that strip on Leary right there. Uh -huh. Yeah. That we go out and then right down here we have a couple of community partners as well and then right over there and i mean that's just fremont you know that doesn't even factor in kind of north seattle south seattle and even bellevue so, yeah man 25 hours a week yeah, 25 patient hours a week so, so i'm assuming there's other like quote unquote work tasks that people are doing yeah outside of that of course like what would some of that include so you know with like the some work of the tasks, workshops when we're what? working with patients of course there's like i said the notes and things like that yeah. and of course that is that moves it into 30 plus hours you yeah. know so it all ends up being about 40 hours but you know like when we're with the patients mm -hmm. it's these hours so we can be energetic mm -hmm. 
and we can be focused yeah. versus spreading so thin just so you can have, you know, the convenience of yeah. having like huge hours. Right. Are, are you there or are you present? Be present, right? Done. Yeah, there it is. Are you th there or are you <laughs> present? Wow. So you have, so when you're working with your patients, when you're working with God, your how. customers, your members, be there all in for them. But just understand, you're human. You need to rest. Yeah, we're not robots. No. You know, you can't you can't do that nonstop and yeah. expect that to like work out in the long term. Yeah. Like you know, nobody can do that because working with people is emotional too. Like you can't emotionally expend yourself sixty hours a week and like not have consequences. No. I mean, yeah, there's there's a trade off, right? If you're gonna if you're going to wake up at four a.m. and you're gonna crush it until midnight, there is a trade off to that. And if there's times and circumstances, you gotta be willing to go there, right? Mm. When you, when your company is going like this, and all of a sudden the flip of the switch, it's going like this, and you have a newborn at home, you better be willing to go there. But also understand that it's, it's unsustainable. You know, you need to recharge. You need to, you need to focus on you, and and that's different for everyone. What they love to do to really kind of get back to center and be re-energized. Re so if you were to I know, I know there's some time constraints here because we have some ping pong games to play. <laughs> and I'm, I know you beat me in the warm up game before we did this, yeah. but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, we only played to 11, you know so it really doesn't count. Maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get the game on camera. There it is. Let's do is it. Is that something we can do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So before we go, there, before we, <laughs> before we wrap it up, um, what would you say? Someone's listening to this and they're like, okay, a lot of great stuff. What's the what's what should I do next? Like, let's say I, let's say I own a gym or I'm a, or I'm a coach or trainer or a Cairo PT, you know, someone out there who's, you know, service-based industry. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Make sure you're doing this. And I know there's not one thing. Yeah. But do you have something that would fit that? Yeah, I would say ask your team what they want and don't be scared of the answers. Sometimes you're so scared of the answer that you don't ask the question. You have to ask your team, what do you want? Are you comfortable with these hours? Are you comfortable with your job duties? Are you comfortable with the vision? Are you comfortable with the meetings that we have? Do we have too many meetings? You have to be open to that. You have to, you have to look inward. You have to ask your team around you. And you also have to, you, you have to look in yourself too and be like, what am I doing this all for? Do I wanna just open up a practice? Do I wanna just open up a gym to just do that? Or do I want to bring something different? Do I want to change something? You know, like Tony Robbins said it best in an Unshakable that book that he came out with. He said, well, you know, what is the meaning of happiness? He's like, it's simple, it's progress. And I'm like, oh, yes. Somebody finally, someone codified it and was able to like distill it down to one word. When we're making progress and components of our life, we feel happy. God, you know what, speaking on that too, like, and I think you could almost think about it like potential as well. Mm -hmm. Let's say your theoretical potential is way up here mm -hmm. and right now you're there. Yeah. And whatever situation you're in, it doesn't allow you to move closer to that, the actual potential that you as a human being have. Yeah. That's where you start to feel extremely frustrated mm -hmm. and upset. But w as long as you're moving toward that, and th this is the same exact thing, right? As long as you're progressing towards that ultimate top level potential that you have, mm -hmm. you're happy. Yeah. Because you're, go you're going towards that, right? <laughs> yeah. And some people have different, you know, the height is different. Right. I yeah. mean, kinetic is here, and we want to be way above the rooftop. But as long as you're going but, this way, you're like, but today, this, today's a great day. Today, right now, compared to when I woke up this morning, I'm here. I'm actually here. <laughs> not to and scale. I'm there. This yeah. is not to scale, right? <laughs> so I've moved that needle. I've moved the ball down the field, right? Mm. And so I'm eternally happy and grateful for the privilege to be able to do that, yeah. right? So, you know, to answer your question... Like, what are some tactics for people to do? You gotta look inward. You have to look at if you're serving your team the best that you can. And it's not always more vacation days. It's not always, you know, um, you know, healthcare, like more benefits in the healthcare spectrum, or which is very important. Or more money either. You're right, it's not, yes, exactly. So, you know, everyone, each one of us just wants to serve a purpose that we have, right? I truly believe that like motivation is is kind of comes and goes, but you're eternally dr driven that's by your the, drive. That's the damn truth, right? Like, like there's days. I mean, people will look at you, Ryan, and be like, "That guy is 
always motivated. That's why he's doing great things. You should see the backstage. Exactly, right? <laughs> it's messy. But you have this drive, this sense of purpose, right? Yes. Why? You have this drive, like, why am I doing this today? Why am I getting out of bed this early? Why am I having this interview today? Why am I working so hard? Because I'm, I'm serving a greater purpose. Because then it doesn't feel like work, you know? No, you it just, It's just like what no. you feel like you have to do. This is what I have to do. It's right. almost like you're compelled. Right. Versus like, oh, I guess I got to do this thing. Yeah. If you're, if, if that's how you feel, like you gotta, you gotta really evaluate internally, yeah. as you said. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So hopefully that answers your question. That does answer my question. Awesome. Put it there. Thank you, sir. My pleasure to have. Ping pong. Yeah, let's go ping pong it up. Yeah. Thanks for uh, coming on here, and for people who are listening, like, hey, I want to learn more about Kinetic. I want to see what they're doing. Where should they go? So go to our website. Uh, it's kineticsportsrehab.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Kinetic Sports Rehab. Definitely check out our YouTube page, Connect Sports Rehab. Definitely subscribe, follow our content. And yeah, if, I mean, if you want to... You guys put get, out a lot of great stuff. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Brian. So if you want to get kind of that virtual um, sense of the Kinetic experience, definitely check out our amazing website. Yeah, and I highly recommend that you guys check it out. There's a lot to be learned from what you guys are doing and just everywhere, you know, yeah. from being here in person to seeing what you're doing online. It's great stuff. So yeah. thanks, man. Yeah. All Appreciate right. It. Let's go do this ping pong thing. <laughs> Let's go.